Yeah. Right. Wow. Well, thank you for yes. having me. Oh my God. I'm so happy that you're here and I see our friends are coming to join us. Thank you, everyone. Um, I, um, while we're waiting for everyone to come on, um, I just want to um, say, first of all, I'm here with the fabulous Mary Phelan. Who oh. I, mean, I have adored and worshiped Mary for years. And then a year ago, we finally became personal friends and started working together. And wow, my life is just so much better with you in it. Aw, you too. Thank you. That's so kind. <laughs> yes. Um, so while we're getting started, I do want to mention we're going to be, uh, so everyone who's joining, I'm going to give Mary a fun little interview, a little hot seat. Um, and Mary's going to talk to us a little bit about tarot. Of course, just with, as with any of these extremely powerful modalities, it's important to really have a base of knowledge and understanding. Otherwise, it's so easy to have assumptions or misinterpretations to bring in energy that's more powerful than you know how to manage. Uh, Mary teaches tarot. Um, and Mary, you have a class coming up on Sunday, yes. right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I'll be sure to put the link for that here in my comments because Mary is really an amazing tarot teacher, amazing teacher all around. Oh. And one of the nice things about studying with someone who is a master in so many modalities is then um, when she teaches, she can teach with a, uh, a resonance that goes so far beyond the micro subject. Hmm. Uh, yeah. So, Thank you. Mary, can you tell us a little bit about your upcoming tarot class? Just so I, because otherwise I'll forget and then I'll oh, go. Sure. Oh. Yes. yes. Well, you know, um, thank you so much, first of all, for such a kind introduction. And I feel the same about you. I had heard about you for years and years. A lot of the people that had come to my stuff went to your stuff. And I could tell we had a compatible way of teaching and coming from a similar uh, place. Um, I'm a geek. I'm a geek with <laughs> electronics, but I'm also a geek with metaphysical things. <laughs> and the tarot class that's coming up is going to be on the major arcana. And just as a real brief thing, I, everybody that teaches tarot or does tarot is so unique. And I think of it as like quilt, quilt squares. And that just because I've studied it so long, um, I may not even teach the same assortment as the next person. That's why it really is good to try lots of different teachers for lots of different things because everyone has their own view. Mm. But this one coming up, is one of a series of 12 classes or 13. I could really do a lot more, but it, it's, um, I approach it from a very different view, more of a therapeutic spiritual vibe rather than maybe the more traditional that was based on Freud and Jung's type of mentality and um, from that age, which is wonderful and it's very powerful. And I do cover that, but this is the major arcana as far as writing the story of your life would be this in a nutshell, understanding how archetypes move through your life and what they are and which ones you are getting ready to go through and lots of fun games and exercises. Mm. I guess that sums it up a bit. And I think that's one of the more um, enjoyable details as to why your classes are so good is that you, you don't forget about the fun. You can be mystique and have fun at the same time. And yes. I, I appreciate that with, with the way you share your work. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, and, and you know, sometimes people have asked me why or where it all started. And I, I know you have a rich history with tarot as well. And for me, it started when I was a little girl and you probably remember Bonita, the Dell books that were in the grocery store oh, as yeah. you checked out. And I got one on palmistry and one on tarot mm -hmm. because I, I love to do readings with playing cards. And my aunt, who I'm talking in the early 60s, used to keep a tarot deck in her secretary. And I oh, it just looks so mysterious. And 
So I, I don't know how I did it, but I got a hold of a deck when I was about eight to 10, maybe 10 years old. And I had the Dell book and I opened it up and I saw the three of swords with the swords through the heart. And it freaked and the death card and it freaked me out so much. Kind of, I don't even remember what happened to that deck. So I started doing playing cards for all the kids at the slumber parties. And I did these, had these fun reading games that we played to see which boy liked us the best and all that, you know, putting down the kings. <laughs> so um, that's, that's where it started. And then there was something that came to me in a vision and in a dream. And I woke up one morning and I just felt I had a calling to make tarot more accessible because it really is a vocabulary that we use to speak to our higher self and to the universe and that it's our vocabulary. It's not a power in the card. It's not what they're even programmed with when they're printed. It's something we develop and it's a very respectful, I honor all my cards. Like I have decks that are 25 years old that don't even have a bent corner. Um, I, wow. I consider them my most sacred. And <laughs> there's this one deck that I used. This is 25 years old. And we used to feed the raccoons. That's another thing I have in common with you, Benita. I know you love the animals and the raccoons. But somebody picked up my cards from outside and they left one. And it rained torrentially. And I saw the raccoons out there with this wadded up thing. And I realized it was one of my cards and it was the card of the master. And believe it or not, I pressed this in a book and look, you can barely wow. tell. If you look at it, you can see the paper, but it was wadded up and soaking wet. With the raccoons so running around. <laughs> They're to... letting you know who's master. <laughs> They're the master. They're the one. They the ones that got me to spend two hundred a month on food for them. <laughs> <laughs> They're my master. But yeah, that is so. amazing. That's amazing, Mary. But I think that says something for your energy for the cards because I can tell you, I can have a deck of cards for two days and it will be like it will look like I've had it for twenty years. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's also the idea of. When I'm, I was in IT, I could just go around something, a, a computer, and it will start working. So I think there's just something the opposite, because I know a lot of people that are like that. Their energy kind of gets everything flowing, their, their tools included. Yeah, so I would say that <laughs> after having that vision, I realized that I wanted to bring this in a different form. And so I have stacks of books with different spreads and exercises that are used to therapeutically get to your core issues, um, ways to learn how to deal with different personalities. And I've created 14 decks. Um, I've only gotten four in print, but I was thinking later, if anybody wanted to write in that has a relationship issue, I could pull one out of my relationship guidance cards to give it a test run. You know, we all want that. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, I love to try them out before I put them into print. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say, for those of you who have been here on my programs up till now, you've seen me with my, my little Mary's Magical Messages cards. And we've pulled from them. This is the Mary. This is the Mary who designed my sweet little deck. <laughs> and you know what I love about these is like, they take up no room, but they give a huge variety of powerful messages. So it's so easy to pop these in my bag or my suitcase or. Oh, well, thank you. You know how those, those started out, just to give you a little history on those. I had wanted to make fortune cookies since I was a kid I, as I, I, and I did make some like for some of our new moon parties, but cookies go bad. So I started making little scrolls and everybody or a couple people wanted me to make a set of scrolls for them, but that's so much work to roll those. So I decided to make a deck and there's 98 different cards in there. And so I really worked hard to not get a lot of duplicates, duplicate concepts in there. The messages are unique. They're definitely unique. And each, each card a is a little painting as well that I did. Yeah. 
Yes. So, so you see a color painting. <laughs> you guys see there, each one is they're tiny and each one is unique background. I love them. I love them. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, so Mary, about tarot. Now, so far in our program, um, we've taught like, Oracle decks, you know, spirit, the difference between spirit card, angel card. We've done medicine wheel spreads or shaman spreads. Um, of course, we've worked with crystal balls and pendulums and smoking mirror and the dark mirror and all of that fun stuff. Um, we've stayed away from tarot just for you because, you know, it is easy to learn how to do like angel card or oracle card or any of those, like even in a weekend. But tarot takes, you know, you can spend years devoted to it and still be learning new. It, it is very complicated. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about um, how, it, I mean, I'm sorry, tarot is too hard for me to learn. I mean, I could learn it if I had to, but it, I, I admire anyone who is able to absorb and understand this. So can you tell us about your relationship with and history with tarot? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think everybody feels that way. I, I certainly did. And one of the reasons I designed my tarot series the way I do, the first one being intuitive tarot, is I have created lots of ways, intuitive ways to read cards that will get you on the ground running. You can read immediately with those and get really keen insight. And that is something that then I draw upon in each of the segments. So there's the major arcana, the minor arcana, the court cards. For me, the court cards were always the hardest um, because it's like, and so therefore it came up in every reading I did. And what usually happens with people is they try to memorize other people's definitions of the cards. And so the way I describe it is this. When, let's say we first met and I had your business card and I could see that you do all these wonderful things, the Akashic record, you're the master in our area of that and you have been since the you know get-go. And I defer to you on that, even though I do teach that and I have been taken to there, but you, I already know that that's a, a realm that you just are really a master at. And I would know that. But then if we went to lunch and I saw that you really didn't like the egg salad, you like the chicken salad, I start knowing more about you. And then after a while, my relationship with you becomes very unique and different from your relationship with anyone else also. And that's the way the cards are. So I, I have created some definitions of cards that are like little introductory business cards. If you go get a lot of books with the definitions, what's happening is you eventually are starting to create a database of other people's experiences with those cards. And so instead of giving a free, intuitively guided message from the cards, you find yourself, okay, what's the four of wands? Okay, four mm -hmm. of wands means this. What is this spread position? And you're not really in touch with your flow of intuition. So essentially, the sun, class on Sunday is the major arcana, which is the major secret underlying all things. And it's a, a journey of the major arcana that we all go through. And we all have spent time in each of those cards. So I usually bring it down to some fun and games so that people have experiences with the cards instead of memorizing them. So that's, that's that kind sense. of essentially it. But I did do a four year long study of 16 different decks where I took all the fools out of 16 different decks and studied how each of those authors perceived mm -hmm. and uh, their understanding of that deck. And I made an assimilation of all that. And I did that for me. Um, but what I have developed from that is a very simple, it's my information systems background a very simple way to understand the basic structure mm -hmm. and then bringing in the intuitive guidance, you really don't have to get a PhD. And the, the deep study really comes later because it becomes so interesting, but you really gotta know all those people before you start giving them psychoanalysis. 
meaning right. the people of the cards. I mean, that makes sense. You know, as a chef, I had to learn many recipes, many techniques. I had to learn the cuisine of many cultures. But when you're cooking, you're generally just doing your thing based on the knowledge of what you've accrued. Mm -hmm. So I, I can see the difference between studying the different styles of decks, the different styles and techniques of tarot, but then doing your own tarot. And, and that's the one thing that we've been going on again and again in these classes that even if you're looking in a crystal ball, you might get the message seeing it in the ball, or it might download into your head, or you might hear someone in your ear like, however the information comes, it comes. You must mm. honor that. Yeah. So that's yeah. so interesting. Yes, very true. And I think that um, I'm just, I'm going back to that page now because I want to be able to answer people. Also, um, people are asking, how can they buy your deck how can they buy your little mary's deck oh, i want just let rising phoenix in manassas uh um, we, place. yes that's true and and you can just let me know i've got them in their little pouches ready to go um okay and neville built me little wooden things <laughs> but you know i also have my my very first deck which is the inner wisdom cards would you like me to pull a card out of that? Yes, please. Yes, please. Because um, this is really fun for me because I just like doing it. Um, this first is the first deck I made, the Inner Wisdom cards. And I had made them with the help of my son as a thing you could do on the website. And so I drew the pictures myself with this old art program where it was still like little squares. So oh, they wow. are a little pixelated a bit, you know, but, uh, you know, like little squares. But um, it, it, it's, I think I did in 2006, I did these. So, so if, would you like me to pull a card for you? Yes, please. Or, yes, okay. uh, pull a card for me first. And then um, we'll uh, look at some of the people who have commented so far and we'll go through some names. Okay, that sounds great. Well, my, the first card is Messages from Spirit. <laughs> okay, so now I wrote this again, what, 14 years ago, <laughs> so sometimes I read them. Okay, your loved ones in spirit are sending their love and letting you know that they are still around and aware of things going on in your life. They are proud of you and your growth and, and lend their support and want you to know that they are happy and surrounded by love and light. Your spirit guides are also contacting you to let you know that you are never alone. There is always love and guidance around you even in the darkest nights. Uh, reach out for this contact and sur that surrounds you and you will become more and more aware of it. Communication can come in the form of inner knowing, books, dreams, license plates, signs, feathers, 1111 on the clock, and many other things. Pay attention. Drawing this card can also speak of receiving news via email, mail, or by phone. So- Mary, this is amazing. I, I earlier this week, um, Colleen Smith, who is an amazing uh, psychic medium, and her specialty—well, she has her her like highest specialty, above and beyond her other extraordinary skills—is connecting parents to their children who have died. So, um, while Calvin has come to me a lot. Um, Colleen connected us and was able to answer some of the questions that I've had that just have kept me in a deep space of mourning, deep space mm -hmm. of grief. And, um, and one of the things towards the end, Calvin was saying, look, I'm with you. I'm sending you messages. I'm trying to talk to you more, but, you know, Calvin's still developing the skill to be able to do it well, and um, and the messages mm. that, you know, he's like, I'm sending as many messages to you as I can, look, you know, what, yeah, everything you listed there. Wow. This is a message. This is a wow. message, and I thank you. I thank oh, you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, would, that, that's would we like to 
Well, thanks so much. And wow, that's very powerful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, so then let's just pull, a thank you everyone. Thanks for the hearts. Um, let's just pull a few people and then I wanna jump to tarot. So we have uh, okay. Leah, Leah Benavides, who is an amazing artist and very spiritual and, and kind hearted lady and fun. Okay, shall we pull a card for her? Yes, we are pulling a card Leah. for Leah. I know she always says yes to this, so we know she, we got a yes. <laughs> okay, well, I got the card of balance, and we can certainly pull um, the tarot as well. Um, it may seem like you are seeking equality, a, uh, a balance of responsibility or fairness of some kind. But all these things are just vehicles that take you to your real destination, and that is peace. You don't have to have the events line up just right in order to feel this peace. You can step directly into it. Don't get caught up in the ping pong match between good and bad. Uh, don't get lost in the cave of measurement. Relax and know that the peace you seek is right here, right now, and you can embrace it anytime. Wow. And I know Leah, and I know she has, her artwork has really taken off the more she is in alignment with her truth. Mm. So this wow. is, that's really beautiful. That Great. is. Great. Now, Great. Yeah, that is so cool. What a lovely deck. Now, is this one also for sale or is this something that's been yes. out of commission? This is also. Yeah, this sale. is. And my spirit animals are for sale. Those were both created back in the. 2006 or something and this is a deck that sold out my chakra affirmation cards these are all remedies for conditions so um how about if i pull one of these for someone and a regular tarot does that sound good that sounds good let's pull that for uh beth mcgonigal okay said hello to both you and me so i feel like you're <laughs> <so> special <laughs> yes hey beth um so here is um, the way they work is that just like we take a pill, which is a vibration that counteracts an illness, this is an affirmation that will counteract some deep thing within you. So you take the affirmation with you and they are made up of different chakras. Um, and this is the crown chakra. And it is, uh, I am aware of my spirit guides communication. And knowing Beth, I think that one is very interesting. If you say, I'm aware of my spirit guides communication, what that does is it counteracts anything that's not your spirit guide. It becomes flagged and you're able to see when something is to be no. And I will pull a regular tarot for Beth as well. And we got the two of wands. And one of the things about the Two of Wands that I love is it's a man standing there with the world in his hands. And so that talks about power, but it also talks about grounding because the wands are our fire, our creative force. And if, and if we can't get that stability of having it grounded, then we can't really come from a place of power. Yet at the same time, if we give too much into the grounded wand, what happens is we never get anywhere. We just get stuck. We just dream of the world. So I would say here, it's just like the card balance I just pulled. It's a matter of balance, but there's a calling to be really grounded right now. And you can reach out and you can be there and you can be creative and flow, but you have to really watch what's behind you and watch your back, not in a cautious way, but just watch where your funding is coming from. Right. That so is thanks, Beth. awesome. Wow. Those two messages go together so well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's interesting that you are connecting the tarot, like the tarot and your uh, chakra. They're like different resonances, different frequencies. So, but their, their messages really balance each other. It looks yes, like. yes, yes. And in the chakra affirmation, there are eight of each chakra. And I used to put these on my scrolls for when we did bowl events. 
um, like this, this particular throat chakra, I listen to my life with depth and compassion. Uh, what that does is those words are a harmony and a vibration, and it creates that healed state. If I were to pull a card here, the only difference is it goes through my mind and I come up with a new way of thinking, and that changes my vibration. Mm. So um, they all work so incredibly different, you know? Um, well, would you like anything else, Bonita, from the regular tarot deck? Um, yeah, let's um, pull any of your amazing cards. If you want to show off more of your cards that you have or do chakra and tarot, okay. let's, um, let's do something, whatever it is you're called to, because far be it from me to micromanage the math. <sighs> oh. <laughs> let's well, pull something for uh, Debbie Weaver. Okay. Uh, I am, and, and this is something that everybody can participate in. I did readings at the end of every show for 17 years. And many people would call and say that it was meaningful to them too. So mm -hmm. this is the relationship guidance deck that it still is in my prototype. Um, but the, the, the concept is, think of a relationship. These are basically guided toward a romantic relationship, but we have the same dynamic with any relationship. So if, um, now which person are we pulling it for? Just so Debbie, I say Weaver. Deb Debbie, Debbie Weaver. Debbie Weaver. So Debbie, you think of a relationship in your life. And if it's not a romantic relationship, it still works, but this may be flavored romantically, but you can just interpret it around that. Uh, so think of a relationship in your life and everyone can play along. And half of every reading is in, is in how you interpret it and how you apply it to your reality. So this card is called, you have the eyes to see. Sometimes you get caught in between your partner's truth and your own. You may think love means to trust no matter what your eyes are letting you or telling you. Trust doesn't mean that you ignore your own knowing. It means that you trust them to be true to their own nature. Once you do this, then it's a matter of discovery what their true nature is. You know, you see it, you can see it. They told you a long time ago in the choices they made and in the words they said. They tell you every day, Still, you are, are you trusting your knowing? Is your view of them in resonance with what they are showing you? So. Wow, that's intense. Mm -hmm. And then we can pull a tarot card along that for Debbie and just see if there's any further information. And it is kind of interesting because the tarot card is the four of pentacles. And that is a card of it's not a bad card. Sometimes it means saving and, and holding things close, but perhaps because of that trust where you're trying to trust what they're telling you or what you see and, and how it feels different in your body, it might be causing you to shut down a little bit. Maybe, maybe just, in, you know, hold tight to yourself instead of letting your love flow in, in, uh, in its form that it would naturally be in. So that's what I got there. Wow. Mary, this is such an intense message. Could we pull another card just on um, some sort of uh, message for like flowing of, of love for, for Debbie? Mm -hmm. Now, I think one of the messages of that card is saying that it's okay to just be in that dynamic and let it be independent and unique and mm -hmm. not have that four of pentacles where you have this strict structure that you're trying to fit it in. So that out of resonance with what you see and what you feel doesn't necessarily mean you can't trust them, that mm -hmm. they're, they're doing something behind your back. It just means that you need to see what their true nature is so you can accept them. So let's see what would be another message that would be a good thing to know. Okay, now this one's called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. How much of this circumstance is really that important to you? How much of this situation are you resisting just because of a belief that it shouldn't be? It's just what we were saying. Yeah. Uh, take a new look at things and choose your battles. Is this really worth the struggle? 
is this furthering the plot and the story of your life? If not, then just let it go like the night lets go of darkness at dawn. So not bad. I think that nice. was a permission to let go and flow that the universe has your back and just trust your knowing. It will tell you each moment where to step. This is a great message for everyone. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, Veyana is asking, what is your method of pulling the card? Like they've seen me, seen me where I put the deck to my heart and I tap it and then I do a little shuffling and then I just sort of let my fingers pull a card. How are you pulling a card right now? The way I do it, um, and it's evolved over the years, um, but for me, I one of the cards glows. I do this, I just look at the backs and then one glows. And over time, what happens when you start trust it, trusting the messages that come through, the things that show up in your life, the guide messages, the, is you get to this really quiet place of knowing. And I would say there's a feeling that goes down my back and in my solar plexus and in my heart that just feels like the right one. And it's so out of, out of my thinking that it just shows up. <laughs> exactly. And that's one thing that like, um, I want to just express when we talk about like it glows or if I'm doing a uh, readings for a group of people on zoom so it's all the little boxes and I'll say someone's box will light up even though like with my 3d eyes not necessarily with my spirit eyes it's like there's extra energy somewhere it does seem to have an extra resonance but you can't be staring at it with 3d eyes you have to let the spirit sight come in mm -hmm. yes i agree that's well said i definitely agree with that although having um, said that we, we have a pond down the hill in the woods behind our house with a creek that goes through it and um the other day no it was like a week ago my dog was running around in the woods and i was standing at the edge of our yard watching her run around and i looked at the pond and it was glowing it was glowing and it was like milky white and blue and glowing. So of course my third, first thought was like, what kind of jackass dumped some sort of chemicals in my pond? And so I went around the side of the hill so I could get a better view and it looked normal. It looked totally normal. I'm like, it was a message. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The first thing I did was saying someone had dumped chemicals in my pond. So I ran around and I looked at it and it looked normal. And I'm like, no, oh. I'm like, okay, but I'm just getting to space. And I spaced out and the glow came and this mist came and I got a message. Wow. So sometimes the glow does look like, like sometimes yeah, it sometimes is. Sometimes it literally looks like a glow. Yeah, that, that's so true. And you know, all this really our 3D self is going to look for 3D things because it's in charge of doing that. But you said that so well, there comes a time where even though we know, um, I came up with an affirmation for myself years ago that um, helped me to get past this. It's, and it, I see magical things all my life, but it's hard for the brain to believe in it. So I would say, I know this is true, whether I can believe it or not, because trying to get me to believe it it's like I, I, it's like hitting my head against a brick wall. So I just stopped trying. <laughs> right. right. Wow. Yeah. Well, would okay, you so, like a message from Kuan Yin? Um, yes. Let's do a message for Kuan Yin to um, Lori Lee, who also says her friend took your class last month and loved it. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So this is a deck I created. Um, that is a channel deck from Kuan Yin. And so I'm going to pull a Kuan Yin card from you and then we can also follow it up. Yes. Um, okay, Kuan Yin says, I speak to you in dreams of the awareness beyond the veil. Open up to this information, write down your dreams. So it sounds like dream exploration might be the thing. And then the, the tarot card, Oh, how wonderful. The Fool is your next card. And the Fool, you know something, and this is from a Billy Joel song from back in the 80s, where he says something about 
laying your heart out there and walking away a fool or a king, I really feel that the king that holds back is really the fool and the fool that lays it out there is really the king because there's nothing left to hide, the, the, nothing left to lose. And I think that when we're talking about your dreams and just really letting go, not only of your night dreams, but your, your daydreams. And this is the card, like when you go off to college for the first time, that whatever is going on in life, we can treat it like we did when we were 18, starting out in the world, even if it's a new job, even if it's something that we deem a failure, it's not. So that's what I got from that. Mm, that is nice. That's <laughs> nice. So Mary, I want to ask you before we go on, because you said your next class is on the major arcana. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, yes, of course. I actually have no, I mean, of course, I've heard this term. I've heard this term, but I have no idea what that means. So for me and anyone else who's going, thank God, Benita just asked that question. Can you tell us briefly what, what this means? Yes. And the major arcana is the major secret underlying all things. So if we look at that as this larger biorhythm in our life. So what I do and, and everything I teach is stuff in a way that was either shown to me through a guide or it was something I created to help me learn it. So this is what I created to help me learn it. Um, we go into how we fall. In, I describe archetypes as rivers that we fall into, like when we become a mother. Um, it's, it's something that we just kind of connect to this thing and we figure it out. It's not like we go to school for it. Well, there are very specific lessons in each of these steps along the major arcana. And by learning those steps, you are also learning your way through life. We do lots of exercises with it. So there was once a time when that was the tarot deck. That's what people used. And these were life stories. So let's say we get the card of the empress, that you're heading into the empress and that's motherhood. And it doesn't have to mean a baby. It can mean a project. But then it's sort of like the I Ching. You, you need to see where it's going. It's a yes, but, or a yes, or a no, or a no, but. Because if something's getting ready to change into something else, it's good to know that. And so the major arcana helps you to understand these larger cycles in life. And so when they come up in a reading, it's usually talking about a bigger biorhythm. And mm. so that's why I start there. It helps you to understand the basic structure and how to use that to create your life and to understand what's come before. And so I hope that was helpful. That's very helpful. Thank you. Great. You're welcome. Now, I also have another question. Um, tarot spreads. When you're doing a reading, the different spreads. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about like, like anything from a one card to like, mm -hmm. because, um, and I just, yeah, go ahead. I'll, okay. I'll ask my um, part two after that. I, I would say that uh, just to give you an idea, I have three of these books with sheet protectors of spreads that I have created, three, three full books, and each class I, I share some. Now, what I created those for was to find your own guidance, and, and it's from a, ther a therapeutic place. Basically, what a spread is, is a little question. And so for me, when I tell people, when you're starting out with tarot, never do a spread bigger than four, because what you're doing is you're going into the database mind where you're running through all these definitions and you're running through this and that, right? So what I reserve those larger spreads for is that I have a, an assortment. I'm going to put all these in an ebook because I was always wondering what to do with these because they're very useful to have. Um, what you want to do is to keep you at the lowest number of cards that you can still be free flowing and using your gut with you instead of it going into the mind. So if you look at the, for instance, the past, present and future spread, uh, I give techniques on how to turn a tarot reading into a, a living picture instead of three snapshots, how to get those rolling into a movie, which is usually the hardest hump people have when they do readings. And one of the ones at the ending of this is I 
uh, a class on how to be a reader, how to help people that need help when they need more like psychiatric help than they do from a tarot reading and how to start and stop a reading and how to get those, um, you know, kind of uh, all lined up so that you feel competent and comfortable about giving readings. I actually gave free readings for uh, from the time I was 10 until uh, a long period I, I practiced. Now, I'm not saying everybody has to do that, but you have to go where you're comfortable. So one card spread, you can just say, tell me about this. A two card spread, I, I think you could do a two card spread to say uh, what's something, like the one spread I give in the first class is the traffic light spread, stop, <laughs> yellow and green. And so with any circumstance, and Bonita, do you have a question? And I can give you an example of this spread or any area of your um, life that you've... Do I have a question you mean from life? Um, um, just any question, like maybe you might have a question about a project you're working on, or we could even get anybody if they have oh a my question God. just For to me, demonstrate. It's all, about, it's all about finding balance. You know, I get overwhelmed, like I need time for myself. I carve a little time and then immediately I'm like, oh, look, I have this time. I can do something with it. Like for me, it's uh, all about finding balance. We must be twins, I tell you. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So now what I'm going to do is pull a card that says stop and then be cautious about or look further into, and this is a go. So what you do is you say for you to find that balance, what you need to do more of to go is one of the things that is happening when you try to carve out time is you're cutting off your queen of cups and your queen of cups is really you. Your heart is so flowing. And so maybe there is a belief that says for me to get the space I need, I need to just shut everybody out because I get pulled in and I have to do that. And then when you get over here, you get lonely because that's not who you are. <laughs> so the go card is you got to take her into hibernation with you. So mm. let's look at the rest. This is the yellow card, the caution or to look further into. And that is the, the school. This is the, the business. And so one of the things that I feel between these two, if you get that structure, that school, your, your mystery school and, and all that, if you get that in a partnership with your flowing flower child self, the earth child mm -hmm. and say, okay, I'm going to put her within this and she's going to be protected by that structure, then she doesn't have to feel like she's been locked in her room while everyone else is out playing. And then she'll let you rest. And this is the card of what to stop doing. And this is so interesting because this is the emperor and the emperor is structure. So I think that there is the, that would say there's a part of you within you that is trying to make this free spirit you get over here and get her homework done. And the free spirit says no that I have a lot to offer you, but you have to let me breathe. And how you do it is look further into how can I build a structure that lets each side be happy. So that is just one example, how to use um, the stoplight spread. That is your cards know me so well. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a question here from Lena. What does it mean if you have a reading with majority of major arcana? That is a very good question because Benita had two out of three that were major. What that means is typically you are going through a period of larger, let me see a way to explain it so I don't have to give a lot of background. Um, if we look at the major arcana as being these larger biorhythms that we're going through, then what happens is, um, whereas the minor arcana are more, they're not even short-lived, but they're of less consequence on this soul journey. So what happens is whatever your question is, says you've got some soul lessons or some soul information involved in it. Like let's say you're talking about your job and you get mainly major arcana. Well, then you are learning a lot through that job. 
And what I would do, I would climb down from that idea of, oh, do I stay or go? And I would look at it and say, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to try to leave this until I understand what, why the universe put me here. And then that would open me up to extending the path of a spread, which is where we then go. We stop in the middle of what we're doing and we see this, let's say, um, the, the hermit card there. And we stop and say, oh, I have to have a conversation with this particular card. Let me pull some more cards until I go. And one of the things that's really hard for people to do a reading is they feel that they have to homogenize everything into one thought. And they don't let each breathe, much like what your cards are saying to you, Benita. It's like you have to let both sides breathe, you know? Oh, my God, that's kind of an appropriate statement for now, too. You know, For all of us. Yeah. yeah. You know, I find when we do card readings or messages and there's a group, the messages that come through for individuals are often the message for that person that really resonates with everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Like of all the messages that could have come through for me, the one that you gave is one that really many of us can claim. And mm-hmm. I think So for all of you who are watching, not just tonight with Mary, anytime you're with me uh, and I'm doing messages with anyone, you'll notice this is a pattern. So this is one reason why the messages you get in a group might be a little different from the messages you get if you do a one hour, like if you do a tarot reading with Mary or a message reading with Mary, aside from then you get like an hour or so of designated time that's all about you, so you get more, the message will then only be about you, not you as others can connect as well. Um, Mm, That's very good. Yes, and I have found that repeatedly. As a matter of fact, in the intuitive tarot, which is the first class, and I'm getting all these recorded just so I can put them out there, but, um, and I have them recorded on audio already, but Um, one of the things that I show people is we pass around the same card and everyone gives their take on it. That's why the reading goes here, but the interpretation meets you up here. And that's another thing that that we go through and how to really read read what you've been given from the cards and how you apply it to your life. And so I just have a lot of tips and tricks and um, advice about all that. That's very cool. Now, um, the other question I have, I feel like you already kind of, and guys, I just put Mary's, um, I don't see where it's, yeah, Mary's business Facebook page, which is Mary Phelan Holistic Detective. (laughs) And um, that's from um, just a shout out to Douglas Adams and Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, because I love that book. And I was going to call myself Nancy Drew at one point because anybody that does EFT with me, you know, it's, we really go in to look at core issues. So I, I've been calling it that for a long time because I, I find it very amusing. Anyway, that's the history of that just to. Yeah. And I'm a diehard Doug Adams fan. Yeah. 42. Diehard. Someone wrote 42. <laughs> <laughs> I met him once. When I was in college. Yeah. When I was in college, we arranged, I was in the student government we arranged for him to come and give a, a lecture because he was doing a book tour, promoting a, a book. And I think it might have even been Dirk Gently. And um, he was ill. We later learned he was like suicidally depressed, but we're mm. told he was ill. So a year later, he was doing the US tour. He called us. I was still in the student government. He reached out to us, like he still had our contact information. And he said, I feel so bad that we canceled last year. I want to come and do it again this year. And not only did he come in and he did a book reading and he spoke to the audience, it was awesome. But those of us who organized it, he took us out to dinner afterwards. Oh, nice, nice. He, yeah, I. what I found so beautiful too is they did f- compute this this cosmic number I can't even remember the details now but scientists did and it actually turned into 42 so my conclusion is yes Douglas Adams is God (laughs) I mean if if this equal that then that must equal this 
Yes. Yeah, that's great. And if those of you who don't know who Doug Adams is, he was one of the uh, writers for the Monty Python Flying Circus. He wrote. Um, uh, he wrote Hitchhiker's so long, Guide to the Galaxy. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So long, yeah. thanks for all the fish. Yeah, that, yes. that's easy. I love unusual humor and um, that kind of stuff. But yeah, wow. Yes. Wow. So, so, so another question I have for you, and also Rose Maria would like to have. We have a few people who are requesting uh, okay. a draw of any type, and um, let's see if they want to buy your cards. Can they can contact you through your website? Is that it? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Or just Facebook message me. Um, okay. So I put your I put your business Facebook page here the uh, holistic detective so you guys like mary's page because she does fun stuff and she put, has great posts on there oh thank you yeah. all right so i'm going this is my summer solstice deck since we're so close and these decks i have not published yet but um lisa actually recommended i put them on kickstarter so i hadn't even thought of that because you know it's pricey to print them and going through a publisher they pretty much own them and you don't really you know, have any right. say so over them. So anyway, so now what, what is the person's name we're doing? Rose Maria. Rose Marie. Okay. Rose Maria. Rose Maria. I love that. Okay. So this is a message from the summer solstice from the sun. Trust seems to be in opposition with the evidence of life. Perhaps you've been confused about which one to follow. The light illuminates your relationship with trust and heals and mends any conflicts or separations. It is safe to trust trust. And your message from the cards are, ooh, the justice card. Now, one of the things with that, we've got the trust card over there, and then we have this. And one of the things that we love about justice is that we, it's something like that strong figure with the balance and the scales is that we can trust this. And I think one of the things going on in our world now is we can't trust authorities. We can't trust those structures we used to be able to. And maybe it's filtering down into our personal lives as well. And that's saying that everything is going to work out okay. And if you have any kind of legal thing or contracts or, or jobs or anything that you're going to sign, that everything is going to work out. And what I would do is just say, I turn it over to the universe and, and everything's going to balance out in the end so i do get a good feeling about that so thank you wow that's lovely lovely rosemary i hope that resonates for you um and we also have cheryl hicks asked for a reading okay um, if you could pull a card for her okay so and let's do another summer Remind me to catch you offline. I have a friend who did uh, a GoFundMe for her uh, Oracle card deck and did really well with okay, it. Okay, great. So I'll connect great. you. Great. Well, thank you. Oh, that would be great. Thanks. Yeah. Um, okay. So for Cheryl, is that who we're doing next? Hicks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is the Solstice card as well. Your sweetness and kindness have been witnessed by many, but you may have been judging yourself, thinking that these are weaknesses. The light illuminates your powerful strength as it plays out in love's gentle arms. So that is your message from the sun. Wow. And then the regular tarot. And we pulled this earlier. And there's always messages when we're in a group and a certain card comes out. But this, again, is the four of pentacles. And... <laughs> I, I, what I'm getting from that is there's a greatness, this thing that you've, you really put yourself there out in the world, like these gifts, like a bouquet of flowers. And sometimes it can feel like nobody is really getting it, that you're not really seen. And what happens with that is we kind of just retreat because we don't want to be disappointed or feel that whole familiar feeling of putting it out there and it never really pans out, that kind of thing. And I really do feel what this is saying is just to take that middle man, people hear me say that a lot, take that middle man out of the equation and just go for the gold and just hit it out of the park because there's just great things waiting for you, really. So good, good fortune for you. 
That is awesome. Okay, Great. so I have a question for you. Okay. Um, because we invited you here tonight because you are a tarot master. And you guys, if any of you have tarot questions, please feel welcome to type them in. Um, but you are, of course, a multi-dimensional, multi-faceted, multi-master. Um, <laughs> you guys, I have brought Mary on. I had um, a, a client that was referred to me. And this was in a whole other country in India, uh, or a whole other part of the world in India. Uh, she was getting stigmata. She was bleeding from her hands. And um, so the person who was working with her contacted me. And I gave the messages that I could give. And it was all very meaningful. But I'm like, we got to get Mary in here because we noticed that not just bleeding from her hands, but the lines on her hands, on her palm were changing. So Mary came in and did palm reading from around the world with like, you know, we were all in other parts of the world, all of us. And Mary was able to find the core solutions and answers we were looking for that originated in another galaxy and another universe. We think in this, actually, maybe in this universe, another galaxy far away, that this woman's home planet was reaching out to share information to you. And between Mary and me, we gave her all this information about her home race, her home planet, what was going on. And when we're done, they turned her computer around and this entire wall had she had like drawn a galaxy and she was like writing what she thought was a science fiction book. But everything we said was represented in there. But Mary saw it in the lines of her hand. So I wanted to find out like tarot, astrology, no, astronomy, no, astrology, sorry. I do astronomy, you do astrology. Although you may do astronomy as well. Tarot, astrology, <laughs> and palmistry. I know you are pretty expertise at all of these. Are there uh, now, as far as astrology? Yes, uh, I just wanted to also state I do Mayan astrology. The regular astrology, I I'm not an I I have not studied. I mean, I'm familiar with some, but I wouldn't claim any kind of um, study in that. Um, but what you're bringing up is so important because the way I see it is that there are two parts of me, the part of me that remembers everything and the part of me that has forgotten. And that if you boil everything down into that, and I believe that the part of me that remembers everything leaves clues and it leaves clues in the lines on my hands, in our, in our faces, in the cards and the people that we meet and all that kind of stuff. So yes, I think there is commonality. And I know in numerology, like if you do that and you all the different types of astrology, Native American astrology, Chinese, you start seeing that there's a similar thread that comes through for you, you know, that's all about you. And um, palmistry was something I, I also did for a long time. And I, and I find it very fascinating. So we, we have a lot of fun when we're together looking at hands and you've got some interesting features on your hands. And, and Neville, Neville, my partner Neville um, from Telepathic TV, uh, he studied palmistry since he was in college. So um, we have like a, a lot of palms we've read over the years. So, yeah. That's so. something. Yeah, you've read a lot of palms. Yeah, pro probably a lot over the years. Um, and it's one of those things, just like the cards, that it's an introduction to, it's like a doorway to some information. And when you get really comfortable about just knowing what you need to know to, to read the business card and then let the rest come to you. It, it's really profound what can come through. Yeah. yeah. I got to say that was one of the most interesting poems <laughs> I'd ever read uh, that, that yeah. I had ever seen. I mean, I've never seen anything like that. And for those listening, do you know, have you seen like a star to a uh, star sapphire or a star rose quartz? sphere mm -hmm. where it's almost like a holographic 
plus uh, like a star in it. Mm -hmm. That's what it looked like on her hand, didn't it? It didn't look like it was even attached to her hand. Right. Yeah, no, that was wild. And, um, and it's interesting, like what we're talking about with the palmistry, I learned uh, reading palms from gypsies when I lived in Greece. And the reason they allowed me to hang out with them is they looked at my palms and they saw like, you guys, my, I was born with like wrinkled, wrinkled palms. I have lines under lines, under etches, under sketches, all over. Everyone made fun of me when I was a kid with all, they're like, you have old hands, but they're right. You know, it's um, what, when the gypsies looked at my hands, they're like, well, you are a very, very old soul. We see it in here. And they would show me, if you look at the palm of someone who's a new soul, they don't have nearly as many lines. It's a much smoother hand. Now that's what they taught me. Um, you know, uh, I, think there's, I think there's truth in that to a degree. Now, one thing I've noticed that I would just put in and, and to add on to that is a lots of lines means you have a lot to do here. And I have a ton myself. And when people look at it, it's like, oh my God, you've got all kinds of things running through your head all the time. Uh, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing um, that we do. But I've noticed that different um, cultures, nationalities will have uh, their own scale of that. Like um, certain one, uh, certain, um, what am I, culture, I'm looking for um, like different races. I know it's one human race. Uh, we used to do commercial. <laughs> we used to do commercials back in 9-11 where it says, I am an American. We did one and we put it out there that I am a human, <laughs> you right. know, I am a human being. Um, but anyway, um, you know, there's a context with that. So if anybody's listening and you don't see lines, you may actually have lines that you're not noticing. Oh, I have lines I'm not noticing because I got too dang many. <laughs> yes. So we, we have a question here from Leah. And this is the artist that you read for earlier. And by the mm -hmm. way, everyone is saying, thank you. I'm crying. Like, these are great messages. All of your messages. I mean, the cards never lie. So the more mm -hmm. open you are to let the proper reading flow through you, which Mary is one of the best, the more you'll like hit the target. Uh, trust and faith, guys. Faith that whatever flows through you is the right thing. Don't hold back. So Leah has more of a great 3D question. What are the best materials to use for creating tarot? I have had someone approach me with this and wanted to make an Oracle tarot deck with her. Um, twice they've discussed it, but she doesn't have the slightest idea where to start, where to go, what to do afterwards, the whole process. All Leah knows is to create the artwork, which she's an amazing artist. Um, uh, let's see, I've been so unsure what to do about this because I need the structure to follow how to create, you know, what are the steps <laughs> or uh, the best resources? I, I am going to tell you the, my truth is that I wish I knew <laughs> because that's one of the reasons I have all these prototypes sitting here. Um, in my journey, when I did it, this was back, I think the last deck that was in print or my chakra affirmation. No, no, my Mary's magical message cards were like 2012. And I had this wonderful little printer for those two decks that um, I've tried to get to republish my cards, but they're out of business, unfortunately. And then I tried this other printer for the spirit animal cards and Mary in um, inner wisdom. And they, like the artwork on here is nothing near the color that I created them <laughs> on. And so what I could tell you is I am going to find a way to get a good printer and get, and I would say the best advice is to number one, kind of do your outline and then um, find out the, um, the format that you need to have the pictures in the JPEGs because that was a big problem for me because I got all this artwork done and it's like, oh, I didn't know how to do that. And see, I looked, I wish I had known Leah then. I wish I was looking for all, all over the place for somebody to help me illustrate the cards because I have so many decks and I've got to illustrate a lot of these. 
and I couldn't find anybody. So that's where I just not being an artist, I just jumped in and did whatever I could, but I didn't know anything Mm -hmm. about that. So if she wants to just kind of keep in touch, as I learn, um, I would say the biggest thing is just start your artwork, get it in that structure and make sure you save them in the resolution you need and in the format you need um, before you start drawing, because I had to go back and try to fix all that after I drew them. Now I can tell you, my sister used to be the person or the professional assistant to Sandy Boynton, you know, the, the artist who did the greeting cards and the books like Hippo Birdie to You for the Happy Birthday to You cards and Mm. And I know that they would make the cards, which were like um, uh, a competitor to Hallmark cards. They would make the cards huge when they made them so that the DPIs were tight when they shrunk them down to the size they wanted. You have to. Um, And and that makes it hard if you're doing digital art because you can't get the whole picture on the screen. I would say that's going to be the biggest thing. So maybe as we all kind of walk through this, we can share that information because it's been so long, as I say, 2012. And I, I, I just fumbled through it basically. Yeah. But now I do have, and I'll answer this and then I want to get back to like why we have you here, the tarot tarot. Um, a friend of mine, uh, uh, successfully did a Kickstarter campaign to make her Oracle deck. And it's a beautiful complex art, but it says here printed at WJPCC. I have no idea what WJPCC is, but they're the ones who printed her first run of her first deck. I have no idea if they did a beautiful job. This is a beautiful deck. Uh, and the cards are thick, and the artwork is well done, but did she get a good deal from them? You know, were they good a few years ago? And they're like, like, I have no idea, but WJPCC is someone to look at, and also look at Kickstarter, GoFundMe, all of those, um, and, you know, type in tarot card, oracle card, spirit card, and see what campaigns come up, and you can contact those people, I'm sure they're, you know. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. I'm I sure think, you'll get some information. <laughs> yes, I, I think I, I'm going to do something like that because I, I just feel like I want to get these kind of off and out the door kind of thing. And I will be happy to share with Leah. And, uh, you know, um, Leah was saying that hers are hand created. And yeah. I know one thing we did with Neville's art when we were getting it online for people to order prints of, um, you can do that with like a 20 megapixel pixel camera just in right. like a slightly overcast and day these were hand created as well so um the, in a lot of ways that's even better yeah so um yeah because it's deep you know it's more well would anybody like another card yes yes let's do another card reading for um uh, michelle blanding on career and love Okay, so Michelle on career and love. Yes. So the inner wisdom card for you. Oh my God, I pulled that same card. Messages (laughs) from spirit. I wanted to show uh, like another card. Um, Well, (laughs) I would say we don't necessarily need to read that again. But one of the things that 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 struck me is it's a little girl or a person coming out of the chimney and reaching up for the message. And one of the messages for that, uh, and we're doing this on career or love and career? Love and career. Or it's love and hobbies. Read- you know, okay. she, she had love hobbies, love career, you know. Okay. Well, I would say as a general message, because a lot of the times there's a deeper current that's running through everything, that it's, it's really calling for you to reach out, uh, reach out for the love, reach out for that. And so don't necessarily this may not be the time to kind of wait for things to show up and it's not to get too ambitious per se. Like I got to go out there and try to do this, but it's like, I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to reach for something higher because maybe in the past you've kind of just settled for what seemed easy that didn't rock too many boats. And 
Um, now, oh, I'm glad this card came up because this was the one that had originally scared me about the tarot deck and it's the three of swords. <laughs> but let me let you know what this card really means. The heart is, is our emotion. The swords represent our thoughts in the tarot deck. So what's happening is these thought or what is happening is these thoughts are intersecting with your heart. And so maybe it's something holding you back. Maybe it's a belief that you're not good enough. And so your thoughts kind of stop you with that career movement forward. That reaching for the love you want is, ooh, what if I reach for it and nobody's there and they don't show up? That kind of thing. And so what it's saying is to let them work in a partnership. Your head and your heart are companions because each brings a different type of information to you and you're the one in the middle that's kind of benefiting from both. So I would say whatever limitations that you got, maybe even in early life that tell you you can't do something to, to just go ahead and do that. Aim, aim for the stars. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Now, Mary, um, do you still share your telepathic TV website or... Yes, it, um, okay. I'm going to be separating that out, but that'll always be up there. Okay, so I'm just um, putting the website link there for those of you who want to see Mary in action. That is such a beautiful message. That is so beautiful. Thank um, you. We have a request from Kat, Catherine Marie Eck, who's the one who gave us the 42. Yay. <laughs> I love people that know those references. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know we didn't get a question, but I'll just go ahead and, and read this. This is the yeah. card from my deck, Inner Wisdom, called Calm Waters. And there's a, a superimposed there's a of a sign peace there. sign. Yeah. Yes. So Calm Waters says, and then we'll pull a tarot for you as well. Uh, it says, underneath all the activity and the energetic investments lies a calm and serene pool of consciousness. The stillness and peace is yours to have any time. Is, is there a conflict going on in your life right now? Perhaps some misunderstanding or some injustice. Do you find yourself swinging wildly from pole to pole? This is time to make... Uh, let me make sure I turn the right page. I'm sorry. My eyes are not as sharp as they once were. Uh, it, is this, a t this is a time to make no other decision but peace. Step into the honesty of the moment and let go of all anxiousness and emotional turmoil. Under all raging waters exists a calm and clear depth. Allow yourself to rest and then just do what feels right. And... Then the card of the Queen of Pentacles. And the Queen of Pentacles is the earth self, the, the, the mother that loves to feed everyone, the one that just loves the animals. She just wants everybody to be happy, but she's tangible and practical and she loves to give and she gives of the heart. And so perhaps part of the calm water message is maybe you are taking on other people's stuff and it's okay to still hold them, but not to put it in that place that you can't do anything about. I always say that having responsibility without authority can just be like hitting your head against the wall. So what do you have power over? What can you do? What step can you take? You take it with the trust that there'll be backup systems. What a powerful combination. Wow. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. And Kat, I think that is perfect for you. That's, that's beautiful. Beautiful. Um, let's see, do we have any more questions? Um, Michelle? Or, or wait, we, did we do Michelle? Did Michelle love career. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she was just explaining more career than a hobby. Mm, uh, I got it. Yeah, get that. Um, so you guys, we can ask Mary for readings all night long, but why don't we, because I have a few more questions for Mary and Mary, can you draw some cards for all of us? Just yes. like a general card for each of us. And you know what? I'm going to draw a card for each of us as well. 
Mm -hmm. And this will be fun. Now, do you mean one card as a general message or several cards? Like you a can card for everybody? Cards, like the, the way you were doing just now, the, the two card draw. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Now, oh, let me do this first. Okay, I, I drew the card of commitment and it shows a woman shaking hands with her reflection. And so remember, open up and each, and this will come in individually for everybody. Commitment means being there 100% in whatever you're committed to while you are committed to it. It's not about the length of time. It's about while you're committed to it, being there 100%. It is not about making decisions for tomorrow. It is about making conscious decisions about what you call into your life today and then supporting these decisions wherever they lead. When you are committed to yourself, you will no longer feel unsupported and unloved because you are the only one that can let you down or betray you. All other external events are just mirrors of this inner lack of commitment. Take this as a sign to commit to yourself. Your love and approval are the love and approval you seek. After all, you are the only person that will be with you through all your lifetimes. Make that commitment. Write your marriage vows to yourself and promise to accept yourself unconditionally. And that's a good message for everybody. And then the tarot card. Oh, I love this. And in a way, you can see my crocheted scarfs behind me. I, it dawned on me that it's very much <laughs> like, like uh, the high priestess with her poles there. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway. That high priestess card, um, along with this card of self-commitment, means to commit to the things you know are right and that you know are true. We get pulled out of ourselves and we're always trying to see how we can fit us into these square pegs, square holes and all this. And sometimes we lose touch with ourselves. So this is saying to just sit with your hands, palms up to the universe, um, I would, because prayer like this means you're not receiving. So prayer like this and just let all the information come to you and be on your own side. Trust your knowing. And that's mm. what I talking about too. That is awesome. I mm -hmm. think that fits with the cards I drew and I'll need your help when I do the tarot card that I drew. But the first okay. card I drew, which I pulled from, again, the beautiful sacred mothers and goddesses deck, I pulled Pacamama, Mother Nature and Grounding. And here's, oh the, I know, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Mm. And what I love about this deck is it incorporates a multitude of earthy colors in a way that is not you know, typical for them. And there's the flowing fabric from the dancing Mother Earth, who is just like spreading joy with every footstep, with every footstep. And she's bringing the sky to earth. Like she's bringing heaven on earth with her dance of joy. Mm. And I feel like this is a reminder for us um, in, this in these harsh times, that we need to acknowledge everything that is happening, but we also need to bring healing, love, and joy. We need to bring heaven to earth. We need to bring heaven to earth. And each of us is capable of doing that, starting within our own vessels and our own home and our own neighborhood with our mm. relationships. And then the second card that I drew is this is um, the Renaissance tarot deck. And it's the one that I use the most when I do tarot. It was um, created by my cousin, Brian. Um, and he's no longer with us, but he's very, so very dear in my heart. And I received the magician, the magician card. Now, I feel like when we have our beautiful Pacamama creating, bringing heaven to earth, bringing stars to flowers, and this is supported by the magician who, in the old days, the magician or the court jester 
was not just a guy who could juggle and tell jokes. He would travel from kingdom to kingdom, from court to court. And the better magician he was, the better jester he was, the higher up. Like, are you a jester and a magician that goes into towns or to palaces, you know? And one of the most important things was actually their ability to memorize because they, they were not always literate, um, although some, many of them were, but they could memorize vast, like they could recite entire songs that would take an hour to sing. They could tell stories. They were skilled in many levels, but they would bring secrets from one court to another. They would, um, first of all, they'd pass along letters and things like that, but a magician, a court jester did not just make magic happen. And this could be anywhere from a court jester to a sorcerer. He would also be an advisor, often the most trusted advisor when in court. So it's a very grounded application of the beautiful Pacamama. So I feel like as we are dancing and bringing the stars to the flowers and the divine to the physical, we're also saying, how can this apply? How is this applicable? How is it viable and useful? And using our very cunning technical skills to make that happen. But Mary, is there anything in the magician that you can tell us about from the tarot perspective? You know, I really love your, your description of that and all that. When I look at the magician, it, you know, it depends on context and everything. But one of the greatest things is that he has everything he needs. And sometimes it just hasn't unfolded yet. And so anytime we think that we are ill-equipped at something, it just hasn't finished baking yet anyway. So why even get caught up in that? And, and it helps you to remember your magic. That if it's sitting there, all I have to do is find it, uncover it. And, um, and so I, that is sort of like the male magic and that other card you pulled was sort of the female magic. It oh, was yeah. so beautiful that you pulled those together like that. What a great combination. Isn't the card's but, always a hundred percent, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, people have asked me before, can you pull the wrong cards or whatever? Cause sometimes we're so confused. We can't interpret the cards. It's always best just to leave the ones you pulled. Because whatever the message is, even if it's you don't understand it, that's part of the message. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I have pulled the wrong card before. And that's always, like, I always know which one it is. It's when I get self-doubt and I'm not trusting. When my hand's going, I'm like, I feel like this is, it's this card. I'm like, no, it must be another card. Like, we, you know. Yes, it's, yes. As many years well, as I've been doing card reading, I can still get in my head sometimes that I'll do a reading and everything is perfect except the one card. And I'll say, you know what? That's my mess up because you, I, I self-doubted at the exact moment of the pull. Let's you know what? That is so brilliant you brought that up because I think even in the non-message, even in the, the card that's not right, there was a message in it mm -hmm. and it was kind of pulling you back. But this is another thing that I think is important, even though all the cards are right and, and they deserve that. Um, yes, and yes, I do the clarifications. Like I was saying earlier, like if you get the hermit and you wanna know what more the hermit says, you can pull more cards and ask the hermit questions and pull cards. So it's like extending the path or clarifying cards. But sometimes there's a card that you just know isn't right. And remember, this is a deck we also use for creation. And you can say, no, I don't own that. And it comes up to, just, I feel in our life, we are shown who, who we are by sometimes seeing who we are not. And we know who we are not. And that can spark a fire to actually understand who we are. So mm -hmm. the cards can just be used in an infinite number of ways, in other words. Um, and so there's never one wrong answer. And I think Leah yeah. was asking about reverse cards. Yeah, I personally don't work with reverse cards and my guides know that. But once in a while, a reverse card will show up and I'm like, I'm always so like compulsive on cards are always the same way. If a card does show up in reverse, then I know they're telling me something, but. 
You know, I'm, you I'm exactly, that? exactly like you. And I put my cards um, all facing the same direction. That's how I uh, clear deck more or less after a reading. I, I they're always in, in the right direction. Um, but same thing. There have been times where I let the other person and see all this is covered in the classes too. So it's too bad. We're not just doing a class right now together because it'd be fun. But sometimes people will pull the cards and hand them to me and they'll hand them to me like that. And then one of them, they actually turn it around and lay it in my hand. And so mm -hmm. I, I will take that as a, some kind of an issue with whatever that card says. Yeah. So I'm, I'm yeah. like you. That. I personally try to only give positive messages when I give readings, even if it's a dire situation, there's always a growth from it. There's always a, a direction. So I like to focus more on the direction than the dire situation. Mm -hmm. I like acknowledge yeah. the dire situation, but who wants to wallow in that? I'm like, okay, so here's a challenge you're learning from and one way to continue your, your path to resolve the lesson so you can get to joy is. And so I find the reverse cards make it harder for me to read that way. Well, you know, I, I couldn't agree more. And I feel if you're not, coming you know people say well what do you do about negativity if you're coming from up here there's no such thing you know it, it's just not it's just a reading but the the traditional tarot and that's why I don't mean this in any negative light but I really don't read books about the tarot as much because or at least most of them because they are more of that Freudian shadow self dark side and that doesn't do any good you know, I, I learned a long time ago that whatever you do, give someone in a reading, it's planting a seed. If you don't want that particular bush, don't plant that seed. And that, you know, it is about taking them to the other side of it. And that's why I brought EFT into everything I do, because mm -hmm. it made, I, I could tell people all kinds of stuff as far as the, the flow of their life. But if I couldn't help them through it, you know, that that's where I felt the part right. of it was but anyway and we have a great question here from lena does angel tarot read the same as regular tarot um there are i would say a lot of the oracle cards have similar types of cards like even the card you pulled tonight in the oracle was very much like the queen of pentacles that we pulled mm -hmm. earlier i mean the same type of energy i think there are a lot of similarities but the thing is really the secret to the answer of that question lies in the reader. There are people that are very dogmatic and very um, like, oh, the, oh no, the emperor is here. Like, you know, this is some like uh, uh, national guard that was called in or something like that. And they're real strict about that. But I treat the cards as a living being and talk. Whereas I feel Oracle cards are a message delivered the cards are philosophies and people. And um, so there's a subtle difference for me, but I think if you talk to anybody else, it might be very different. Mm -hmm. So um, that is amazing. And I think that is our perfect moment for us to uh, maybe share a little about what we have coming up, give our goodbyes. And also Mary, um, I'm going to re uh, I'm going to put in the comments again, your class this coming Sunday, which if I can, I will attend. I would love to study tarot with you. Um, Mary, uh, if someone wants to uh, go deeper in this, have an actual reading with you. Um, and I, it's my understanding when you do readings, you don't just like you let spirit come in in every format at which, okay, let's pull a deck, let's grab a pendulum, let's, you know, that you're, you're just so open and you bring through powerful messages. Um, how can people reserve a reading or a session time with you? I'm assuming on Zoom or Skype these days. Yeah, I would say just email at telepathictv.com, at yahoo.com or even text me which might even be the fastest way or Facebook message. Um, I'll, I'll put my, uh, well, I'll just say my number. Is it easier to put it in there? I tell you what, just, just email telepathic TV at yahoo.com. Yeah. That's kind of an easy thing to remember. Um, and you asked something right before that, that was part of that. Um, 
well, for people to book a session with you and also oh, okay. what come up, upcoming events you have and how oh, can they okay. find out about you? Um, yeah, I, I would say that I'm, I do a lot of EFT and one of my tarot in the series is using tarot with EFT to find core issues and stuff, which is kind of some advanced techniques. Um, I do a lot of EFT and um, that I kind of pull that into the reading. I just, it, it, the way I see it, when I sit in front of someone, I, I, I see their emotional body mapped out in this neon green light. And as I'm tapping, I see images of snapshots from their, their early life. And I can see perhaps this encounter or a particular person that led to this belief that comes up. And so when I'm doing that kind of work, it's just very much like that. It just shows up. If I'm doing tarot, I do that often when I'm in, around people because them looking at the pictures, they get a whole second reading and looking at the pictures and how they wake up something within them. Like, oh, that looks like my uncle Bob. Oh, I wonder what the message mm -hmm. of that is, that kind of thing. So, um, and then if I'm doing any mediumship, which I don't do much of that anymore, it, it's kind of the same as the EFT where like I did that for years, but I think I'm moving kind of out of that. Um, it mm -hmm. takes a, a different kind of, um, you know, focus that I'm more in the therapeutic focus right now, but that's kind of how I do it. And I know you probably have your way of doing that too, where it just, it all comes in one big packet. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And um Let's see, I posted our events calendar. Mary and I both post our events on a meetup calendar. Do you post all your events on that, Mary? Um, uh, the meetup yeah, page? Yeah, I, yeah, Good. I do that. And then there's another meetup page that I do with that I'm, I have with a couple of other people. Mm -hmm. But um, I haven't really been doing a lot of events, but, I, but this tarot series, there are, and of course the paper that I had everything printed on, the next one is a minor arcana and then the court cards. And, and through those, you can develop your relationship with other people. But then I bring a lot of other things into it, like uh, speaking with spirit and animal communication and all that through different techniques of the cards that are further down the stream. And they're all self-existing. You don't have to take them in order, but if you do, they do build on each other. So oh, anyway, exciting. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, I just posted that. And for me, um, I, I had to, just as Mary's cards for me about carving time for myself in a way that really works with balance. Um, this is our last uh, Wednesday night class of this series for two reasons. One, when I put all my stuff in storage, I accidentally put all of my runes and my tarot decks and my books and all of everything that I was going to continue to study. They're in my storage unit. And I, I don't know when I'm going to, like, I don't know where, like, if they're accessible or, like, in the way back behind, you know, a block of packed stuff. Um, but also, um, I channel the Akashic Librarians. and. Um, they are they need to speak through me once a week when i looked at my calendar on how can i manage this without making myself so exhausted um it really needs to be this time slot so starting next week wednesday night i will be channeling the librarians on zoom and i'll put the link here if you want to join some of you already have um the librarians of the akashic records want to sh teach us how to help create what they keep calling new earth which will be like like we were saying uh right now we're in the middle of the the situation where you'd have the upside down card they're offering the path to a better tomorrow um they're teaching us things like uh what is time and why are we so hung up on linear time um how and why was earth even created what beings are out there helping us how to tell if someone is a human in a human soul or if you are a human in a human soul or another species of being from another dimension and why 
they're sharing a lot of the librarians, they share like detailed information and then actions that you can continue in your daily life to put this information to good use for you. So there is a cost for this group. It's $20 a month. But for that, you get to join all four of the weekly live streams. And then they do multiple times in the week little short videos. So you have access to that and the whole backlog library. Or you can buy a ticket to just a one-off for $20, but I think it's a better deal to um, pay $20 a month and attend all of them. They're um, pretty excited about sharing this. So here we go. I'm putting the link. Saturday, so I'm going to continue our Harness Your Inner Fire videos. And um, so please join me on Saturdays because that's where we learn to become very strong energy structures that then we can support doing really sacred, divine, high frequency, multidimensional work while still staying awake and alert and flowing and feeling really good about ourselves. So mm -hmm. that will still go on Saturday mornings and that will be free live stream right here. That will keep on for a very long time. I just couldn't do Saturday morning live stream and then Saturday afternoon channeling the librarians and then teaching all day Sunday. And then Monday I teach my Pranashakti master students. I was just like- That sounds like Mary's a lot. Card. Mary's yeah. card. <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, yeah. um, I'm, I'm also going to be doing um, some free, like free readings, free tapping salons, particularly, particularly for now. Okay. Um, so um, just kind of random. So if maybe I'll post those on the meetup or, or you can just look at my Facebook page or the website or something. But I, I think, you know, what you've been doing has been such a great service. So thank you, Benita. Well, for offering thank this. You. And thanks for having me on for your last one. Are you kidding? I mean, how wonderful, how wonderful to like go out with a bang. <laughs> and, and you guys also all of the Saturday classes and the Wednesday classes I have here in the link I just put as free programs. So you can go and see all of the classes that we've had so far. They're all in there. You'll see Mary starting tomorrow. Um, and all of the Saturday classes are in there for free also, um, so that you can go back and, and play with them. But thank you, Mary. Thank you. Oh, thank and, you. And if you guys love seeing us together, don't worry, you will again, because I love this gal. Oh, I love you too. And it was so much fun. I, I think we could just really have fun and talk forever. Yeah. So let's yeah. do it again. Absolutely. Yes. And we'll when I get the radio show going, because um, I'm going to try to get that going, you have to come on and everyone has to come listen to your Akashic story too. So that sounds lovely. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, everyone. It was a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. You too. Bye, everyone. Bye.